How's everyone doing? Today I have a Blu-ray collection update with seven pickups. And if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave in those comments down below. But first up is one that really surprised me and that is The Fablemans. This is released from Universal. Has some really good special features in here. Uh, talking about a personal journey. This is inspired by Steven Spielberg's childhood. And when I first heard about this, I heard a bunch of rave reviews. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be Oscar bait, kind of goes with the territory. I didn't think Steven Spielberg is going to get a lot of love, uh, especially, you know, critically. And then I just heard like a deluge of uh, negative reviews, just flooding everything that I saw, just uh, terrible reviews for it. And then I watched it and I loved it. Uh, this reminds me a bit of Cinema Paradiso, that kind of coming of age story, the love and passion for cinema. And that's the biggest thing here. This is for people who are A, a fan of Steven Spielberg and B, a fan of cinema. Uh, you know, that passion is shown all throughout. It's a very simplistic story. And the way that it's shot is so engrossing. And I was really impressed by that. I took a step back, I was like, there's certain aspects I didn't like about the story. And I was just thinking this is so formulaic, but it's so engaging at the same time. Tremendous cinematography, great acting. Seth Rogen really impresses me when he does serious roles. I'm not typically a big fan of his. I think he's better, uh, less as a leading man and more as like a secondary or tertiary character. Uh, but here he was really good. And while I say uh, Seth Rogen in a more serious role, he's still jokey. He's doing dad jokes, but it's not as typical like, raunchy, over-the-top comedy. He offers a lot of levity uh, for some of the scenes in here and some of the drama. Uh, but I think this role is definitely one of his best roles that I've seen him in. Uh, this in like 50-50. And uh, you have Michelle Williams in here too. And they actually were in a film together before, also dealing with infidelity called Take This Waltz, which I loved aspects of it, but I didn't love the the overall, especially the way that it plays out. But uh, I thought that was kind of interesting where, you know, they played a couple in that movie and then I don't want to give too much away, although you see right away, the, the mother character in here obviously saw it right away and other things too. Um, Judd Hirsch, I think, was a little bit underutilized uh, right there as the uncle character. And uh, I just, I wanted more from him. He was awesome. Uh, but a really good cast here, Paul Dano, uh, Gabriel LaBelle, uh, and just everybody played their parts just so well. And speaking of uh, the actor who, or the person, let's say, who obviously now an actor as well, who played John Ford was awesome. I recognized them immediately. And I was like, how are they going to pull this off? But honestly, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie. When you were introduced to John Ford, that whole scene was epic. Uh, my only criticism about the movie is the way that it ends. It just feels a bit flat. I understand, you know, you, you have a lot of the buildup and it, you know, obviously works for the character. But I don't know, I just wanted a little bit more uh, after, you know, all that leading up to it. Um, but just a tremendous film. Again, how can you not be a fan of Steven Spielberg if you grew up uh, in, the, in the past, like, you know, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, just so many movies... Uh, from my childhood especially. Let me know what your favorite Steven Spielberg movie is outside of Jaws and E.T. Like Those are two of the top picks. And let me know uh, of a movie that you think is underrated from Steven Spielberg, if that's even possible. Uh, the Terminal might be one that I think is a bit underrated. And one that I think definitely deserves a 4K release is Minority Report. Tremendous sci-fi action movie. Love that one so much with Tom Cruise. How does that not have a 4K release? I feel like that's a movie that would be so well suited for 4k but Fablements uh high recommendation if you're a fan of Steven Spielberg movies like Cinema Paradiso just passionate about cinema um really impressed me and it looked stunning on home video uh the audio as well uh tremendous so really happy with this release uh the 4k release for uh, Fablements <laughs> uh and again inspired by uh Steven Spielberg's childhood great coming of age passion for cinema shows how you know that really helped him get through a lot of challenges and you know uh, dealing with uh, anti-semitic bullies in high school and things like that and then you know the romance aspect and then troubles at home uh, and the, the monkey <laughs> that was kind of hilarious too but uh I feel like this was just a passion project that I think can work on a bigger scale and it did and uh 
I was really impressed by it. And again, I went in with kind of tempered expectations considering just, you know, a lot of the negative reviews that I heard for it. And I think they're kind of unfounded. I think those people just, those aren't the kind of, uh, you know, people that would be into this movie to begin with, I think. So I think that really kind of, you know, changes the viewpoint for it, the narrative. And uh, I think it's also trendy to hate on popular people. Like I see a lot of criticism for like Tom Hanks now, who I think is like a national treasure. And Tom Cruise has gotten criticism for a long time, but check out his filmography. Just incredible. Uh, Collateral. If you're not a fan of Tom Cruise, I always recommend that movie. That might change your mind. Such a great performance there. Next up from uh, Lionsgate and A24 is uh, The Inspection. This reminds me a bit of uh, Moonlight, where it deals with a uh, young gay black man. Uh, this one right here, he's going into the Marines. Gabrielle Union right there is the mother. Um, she had a great performance in here too. Uh, but part of the reason I was saying it, you know, like Moonlight, not just the fact that, you know, he's a young gay black man. Also the way that it's shot, the cinematography is in certain scenes very reminiscent. Um, tremendous cinematography, tremendous acting uh, from top to bottom, uh, especially from Jeremy Pope, who plays the lead here. This is based on a true story uh, from the writer and director, Elegance Bratton. And this is not his directorial debut. He did another movie called uh, Peer Kids. Uh, he did some shorts and stuff, but that was a feature uh, film. And this one right here is, his, I guess, his biggest one. Um, but uh, some good special features here, too. This was uh, much better than I was expecting it to be. Um, I feel like we've seen uh, a lot of these stories and uh, the, the military aspect as well. And uh, really good, uh, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, Bakim Woodbine. Uh, I remember him from, you know, a ton of movies, Strapped. But uh, he was really good in this one as the, you know, really tough drill sergeant character. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the cast here. And you, you see a lot of the predictable aspects coming a mile away. Some of the other people in his uh, group right there and uh, his squad and just, you know, bullying him. And once they find out that he's gay and uh, that, you know, try to push him out and doing everything they can, you know, try to cheat him, almost trying to kill him. Um, so he survives and that aspect is formulaic, but I thought it was very moving, especially dealing with Gabriel Union's character, his mother uh, at the end. That was very, uh, you know, a punch in the gut, very heartfelt, very emotional. And uh, again, incredible performance from Jeremy Pope uh, and Gabriel Union for that matter too. But um, he definitely deserves a lot of uh, accolades for this performance though. Jeremy Pope is the lead here. And uh, if you're into LGBTQ movies, I would definitely recommend checking out the Inspection. Also, there's one that came out the same year as Moonlight. It was called Closet Monster. And I never hear anybody uh, mention that one. That was a, that's probably my favorite LGBTQ movie ever. <laughs> and definitely let me know what your favorite LGBTQ movie is. Uh, but Inspection, another really good release uh, from uh, Lionsgate. Now, this is one that uh, I've heard negative things about the transfer. I haven't checked it out yet. It is the Paramount release for Saturday Night Fever, the 4K, the 45th anniversary edition. Uh, the classic 70s disco dance movie with John Travolta right here. And I love that hollow foil effect on the slipcover. But I've heard there's uh, video and audio issues with this release for the 4K, which is unfortunate. Uh, I heard the same thing for uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles on 4K, which they recently released. Um, so a couple of bumps in the road for Paramount, which... Uh, as a uh, studio is normally really good with their transfers, especially, you know, catalog titles and stuff like that. And this is directed by uh, John Badham, who's done a ton of TV work, but he also directed uh, Stakeout, another Stakeout, Short Circuit, American Flyers, which is a really good racing movie with Kevin Costner. Just that movie was just palpable all throughout. Uh, moves at a frenetic pace too. Uh, but he's directed a ton of really good movies. Point of No Return, Bird on a Wire, which is, you know, rom-com one. Uh, but also War Games, and um, I know he's done a few other ones that I really enjoyed. Uh, 1979's Dracula, uh, but I really like him as a director, and I think he did a great job here. This is just an iconic performance from Travolta, just that intro. Uh, the soundtrack here with Bee Gees, if you're a fan of disco and dancing, this is definitely a movie to check out. I haven't checked out the 4K yet myself, but I do have the previous Blu-ray release, and that looked great to me. Um, so I am looking forward to checking it out and, you know, sometimes other people's, uh, you know, view on a transfer might be different than your own. 
Uh, it's all subjective uh, to a point. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to keep an open mind with this one and I'm looking forward to uh, checking out. There's a bevy of bonus features on here. Um, so that is always nice as well. But there we go. The 4K for Saturday Night Fever. God, I love that cover. That is so awesome. Let me know what your favorite dancing movie of all time is. You know, you could put uh, Dirty Dancing in there, Footloose. There's a few to choose from. And also let me know what your favorite John Travolta movie is. I feel like he's been around for a long time. Or, you know, the Sweat Hogs, Welcome Back, Cotter, or doing TV. But uh, so many great movies to choose from. A bunch of different roles. You know, Pulp Fiction is uh, an iconic one. But, uh, you know, you've got, uh, you know, Look Who's Talking. Don't forget about that. So many, just a range. You know, Punish. Like, you think of his career, uh, all the different roles that he's played. Good guys, bad guys. Uh, so uh, he's been around for a while. A great filmography. A lot of movies to choose from. And I'm curious to hear your choice. And next up is Spy of the Night. This is a UK release, but it does have a release here in the US, including a Steelbook release, which I actually want to get that one now. Um, but this is a region-free release, and this is an animated film using rotoscoping. And this one blew my mind. I love this one. I heard a lot of negative reviews for this, and I thought it was great. It's a fantasy uh, adventure action epic, and it's very much in the vein of, you know, fire and ice uh and other ones like uh wizards and heavy metal uh movies like that and uh has a lot of violence in here uh but it's about this bloom flower that kind of essentially you know can give the person who wields them magical powers and there's this uh like witch character and then there's this guy right here who becomes kind of like almost like a necromancer character uh and just going over uh, different periods of time when they're you know connected to other stories. It's essentially uh, kind of like an anthology, but they all connect. Um, and then there's this guardian character that's, you know, guarding uh, the last bloom. And, you know, you have to climb this mountain and then there's this epic battle. There's epic battles all throughout. I just thought this was incredible, you know, kind of medieval times and just uh, very riveting story-wise as well as great animation. And uh, this took seven years to make because it was a really small uh, crew and especially working on the animation. And I just thought that was incredible. Great uh, voice acting here too. You've got Lucy Lawless, Patton Oswalt. I noticed his voice right away, very recognizable. And also Joe Manganello, uh, a few other recognizable people voice-wise. But uh, I thought this was incredible. If you're into animated movies, again, in the vein of the ones that I just mentioned, uh, this is definitely one to check out. Uh, again, violent, wild, awesome. And let me know what your favorite animated movie of all time is. For me, it's Graver the Fireflies. Super depressing uh, animated war movie. But I love that one so friggin' much. I love depressing movies. Uh, but this one to me, uh, it's a bit bleak. Uh, but it is just incredible for me. I Again, I heard a lot of negative reviews for it. So I went in with tempered expectations. But it blew my mind. Just a uh, visceral, incredible, uh, palpable tension movie and uh for an animated movie of recent years one of my favorites next up from uh, mill creek you've got this four film set right here it's four action movies epic showdowns you've got uh call of the conqueror with uh, kevin sorbo and tia carrero i watched this one a while ago kind of in the vein of like conan uh but uh, a much watered down version uh, there's a few other recognizable people in here tia carrero is kind of like this witch character uh the cowboy way which uh, this was a fun one. Kiefer Sutherland, uh, Woody Harrelson, a bunch of other recognizable people produced by Brian Grazer. Um, it's basically, you know, these cowboys go to the New York City, I believe. And, uh, you know, they're trying to find their friend who's disappeared. And they find out, uh, you know, that he was murdered. And they're, you know, getting in over their heads. And, you know, kind of a fish out of water story. But it's a really fun time. And then you've got End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Gabriel Byrne. Who uh, there's kind of like a, I want to say like, uh, you know, a Satan character in here and he's trying to find his bride and it's kind of like an apocalyptic event. And uh, Arnold, I think he's he an ex cop, or maybe he is a cop. It's been a while since so I've seen it. I want to revisit it, but he's got to stop it from happening. And uh, I remember that one being really good, kind of a, you know, supernatural uh, action thriller, uh, really good tension in that one. And then Jackal, I haven't seen it. That one has Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, uh, Sidney Portier. And it's basically uh, an assassin has been hired to uh, eliminate someone at the very top of the U.S. government. 
and trying to uh, conceal his identity. And he's known only as the Jackal. And the Jackal is directed by Michael Catton Jones, who directed a few movies that I absolutely love. This Boy's Life with Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. That one deserves a Blu-ray release. I can't believe it doesn't have one already. Um, I would love to see that one get a uh, Blu-ray release coming up soon. It, uh, I think it's actually kind of underrated too, but he also directed uh, Doc Hollywood with Michael J. Fox and uh, Woody Harrelson as well in that one. And he uh, directed Rob Roy, which was a, another great one, and Memphis Bell. Uh, so he's done some really good films. And then End of Days is directed by Peter Hyams, who directed a bunch of movies that I'm a big fan of as well, including Relic. Love the heck out of that one. Great horror movie. Uh, Stay Tuned with John Ritter. And then a couple movies with uh, John claude Van Damme in there, Sudden Death, Time Cop. And then Running Scared, a really good one with Billy Crystal and then Gregory Hines. Love the heck out of that one. So some really good directors involved in this uh, four-pack here from Mill Creek. Mill Creek's known for doing like budget buys, um, but they've done some great uh, TV releases, uh, not just recently, but for a long time, but their packaging has really uh, upped the game. And I say this for a long time, they got those retro VHS slip covers. If those are from like another studio, you'd be paying like three to four times the amount that they're going for. Uh, so I definitely appreciate what Mill Creek is doing. Been a fan for a long time. And uh, a couple more Mill Creek releases right here. We've got uh, sci-fi from the Vault 4 film collection. Uh, let me know what your favorite... I want to say, you know, creature feature, monster movie from like, uh, you know, the Cold War era is. Uh, these start from, uh, yeah, these are all in the 50s, actually. So, yeah, from the 50s especially. Any kind of, you know, creature feature or monster movie from the 50s. Uh, we got Creature with the Adam Brain. It came from Beneath the Sea, which I remember being like a really cool, like, octopus movie, giant octopus movie. Uh, 20 Million Miles to Earth. I remember really enjoying that one. Uh, I like a lot of Ray Harryhausen stop motion stuff, especially from that time period. And I haven't seen the th uh, the Thirty Foot Bride of Candy Rock with Lou Costello. Really looking forward to checking that one out. It sounds like it's going to be a parody of the Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman. That's the only one I haven't seen from this one, but I haven't seen the others in quite some time. Uh, I want to say uh, it came from Beneath the Sea. I watched a couple years ago again, uh, but uh, these are at least the other three are that I've seen are classics. Uh, I loved them growing up, so. Really excited. Uh, I remember watching a lot of, you know, these 50s, you know, B-movies and 50s sci-fi movies and, uh, you know, sword and sandal movies and epics like that. You know, Jason the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans and all these kind of movies uh, a lot growing up as a kid, you know, Saturdays on TV. So uh, it's great to see them getting some uh, nice, you know, uh, releases like this, especially in these like multi-pack ones. I feel like these are all kind of uniform. I'm not usually a big fan of multi-pack uh, sets like this if they're not in the same franchise, but I feel like for this, it definitely works. It actually makes me think of growing up as a kid and watching them on, you know, Saturdays and uh, checking out these movies and just them blowing my mind as a kid. So uh, some bonus features in here too. So that's always good, especially uh, when it comes to, you know, film historians and you learn a lot of information that you may not have known beforehand. So I definitely appreciate that. And I love the slip cover on it too. So super awesome. Uh, next up is Thrillers from the Vault, eight films. And there's a few in here that I haven't seen. So I've got, uh, I think six of the eight in here have Boris Karloff. And then you also have uh, Bella Lugosi in uh, Return of the Vampire, which I have seen. It's been a while. Uh, but The Boogeyman Will Get You, The Devil Commands, The Black Room, uh, The Man They Could Not Hang, Before I Hang. A few hanging movies here. Uh, the Man with Nine Lives uh, and then Five. I'm really excited to check out Five. It's about a woman and four men uh, survive a nuclear explosion and seek shelter in a house. They must work together, but their clashing visions of the future lead to their destruction. Kind of a uh, very common theme you see in apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic movies where man is man's worst enemy and they're you know at each other's throats um very typical but i, I love those kind of movies especially post-apocalyptic movies so definitely excited for that one um some classics in here especially return of the vampire uh i remember really loving that one and uh, excited to check that one out again and these range from uh 1935 to 1951 um, so let me know what some of your favorite classic horror movies are from 30s, 40s, 50s. Again, I'm really excited for these sets right here. I'll go ahead and show you the discs as well. You've got uh, stacked discs. So it looks like there's uh, two on each disc. And you take the disc out and then there's another disc underneath. So 
There you go. And then you do have interior artwork too. And just showing a shot right there. And then, um, you know, the going over the movies again. But uh, I appreciate interior artwork. It's a nice little added touch that, uh, you know, doesn't cost too much to make, but uh, it can really, you know, elevate a release. Those, If you're a physical media fan, you can appreciate that. But I just want to show you the interior for the, the sci-fi vault movies, which is pretty much the same where it's two movies on each disc. And then you get a shot right there. Uh, classic from uh, 20 million miles to earth and uh, these are just awesome releases to me i think they're all fitting uh for these multi-packs and uh i'm excited to check out the ones that i haven't and revisit the ones i haven't seen in a while so there you go those are the seven pickups some really good stuff in this one uh, an eclectic mix as always because my tastes are super eclectic but uh, let me know if you've seen any of these and what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And hope everybody's doing well. Take care.